One of the questions I get asked most often is how to succeed in organic chemistry. And I think a lot of people have this idea. In fact, my research shows that a lot of people have this idea that organic chemistry is really, really hard and really, really scary. But it doesn't have to be. And for those of you who are starting OCHEM 1 for the very first time or who are going through OCHEM 2 and you just want to kind of change your study habits or know what you can do to be more successful, I've put together a list of my top six ways that you can succeed in organic chemistry and things that are going to make it easier for you to succeed in organic chemistry. So first things first is this is not a memorization game. So don't just memorize everything because really that's not going to help you a lot. There are some things it's easy to have memorized. For example, when you're in chapter three, there's something called PKAs. Those are really helpful or functional groups. Those are really helpful to just know cold turkey. But for the most part, I really don't recommend that my students just memorize everything because it's not going to help you out as much as understanding electrons and electron density and where electrons move. That's really what I recommend that you focus on as you go through organic chemistry one and even more so in organic chemistry two. It's all about movement of electrons. Number two, practice, practice, practice. I can't tell you how much you have to do organic chemistry on your own in order to succeed. I mean, it really is is challenging. I know it's a difficult thing to do. Um, and if you're strapped for time, that makes it even harder. But the more practice you do on, the, on your own, the more you're going to understand where your misconceptions are and how to apply it. And I think where a lot of people struggle in organic chemistry is when they're they are in lecture and they understand and they do practice problems in lecture and they understand and then they get to the test and they can't recreate it because they haven't practiced it enough. The other thing is the way organic chemistry is currently set up. There's not a lot of practice problems that we can make. So the more practice problems you do, the more likely you are to have seen something that's going to be on your exam. And if you're in my class, if you're in Dr. Berhe's class or Dr. Corrales' class, I know they have a lot of practice problems available and those practice problems really do reflect what's on the exam. So if you understand those, not just have done them once, got them right and didn't think about them again, but really know why you got them right or why you got them wrong, you are more likely to know the types of questions, not the exact same questions, but the types of questions that are going to be on your exam. Number three, get help early and often. I remember when I was an organic chemistry student, I would just sit and <laughs> like get so frustrated that I would cry over problems. I don't know if organic chemistry has ever made you guys cry, but it's definitely made me cry over problems that I just didn't understand what I was getting wrong. And I would really essentially waste time by working myself up, getting frustrated, and then giving up. But if you can just like if there's a question you don't understand, I know it's hard to do, you just want to figure it out right away, but if you could just put a star by it or mark it some way and say, I'm going to come back and get help on this later, I really encourage you to do that because there are a lot of resources for help, like um, your TA, your, uh, on our campus, we have a chemistry resource center where there's always chemistry tutors available. There's this YouTube channel. There's my TikTok. There's your instructor. There's office hours. Any way you can get help, do that instead of just spending your time being frustrated about that practice problem that you can't solve. Um, so the, and the more you get help, the easier it is to get help again. So if you go early on in the semester to the tutoring center and get help, you're not going to get stuck on that concept that's going to hold you back throughout the semester, but also you're going to feel more comfortable going back and getting help again. So I really, really want to encourage you to reach out and get help as soon as you can. Um, the next thing, <laughs> this might seem intuitive, but it's not. It's hard to do. I did not do this when I was taking OCHEM initially, but really keep consistently going to class and paying attention. And that is so, so hard, especially when it gets to a point in the semester. There's a point in first semester OCHEM where it gets pretty easy and you think you know what's going on and then it ramps up really fast. Um, but also it's just hard to go to class. I mean, it's hard for me to get up when I don't have accountability or I don't think someone's going to notice if I'm not there. So um, that, and that also plays into something I'm going to talk about number six later, but I really, really encourage you to keep going to class and keep paying attention. And then even, um, 
Well, I guess I'll get into that for number five. So that's my number four. Keep consistently going to class. Pay attention. Go back over what you've learned to make sure you understand it later. Make sure that you have a good idea of what's going on in class and not just that you um, you went to class and were checked out, but really pay attention. And then my number five is study a little bit at a time. So this pit plays into go to class. And then if you have time, even if you don't have time, you can do this. If you can do it safely while you're driving home, while you're walking across campus, whenever you can, think about what you learned in OCHEM that day. So my students know at the beginning of the next class, I always start out by saying, what did we cover? What have we learned so far in this chapter? And I make them try to remember everything they can about what we've learned in this chapter. If you can do that for yourself, you're going to be interrupting the process of forgetting and solidifying and making new connections in your mind for how to do organic chemistry well. So I really want to encourage you to try to remember what you learned in class later that day and then again later that day you know as many times as you think of organic chemistry try to remember what you learned in class and then also research shows that doing a little bit of studying at a time creates a more long-term memory so if you're going to need ochem ever again in your life this is the way you should study ochem i was always a crammer and it worked out okay for me. I mean, I got okay grades, but if you want to go to medical school, if you're going to have to take the MCAT, if you're interested in chemistry as a grad school, you really want to take more time to study a little bit at a time. And that's, again, interrupting that forgetting process over and over. So if you can, each day take 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes to study OCHEM, that's going to be really good for you. Once I was older and a better student, actually, and I learned more, I would take flashcards with me to work. Um, like once I learned more about how I study well, I'd take flashcards with me to work and I would study OCHEM anytime I got slow at work. So if you work at a place you can do that, that's a great option. Or I would do it while I was brushing my teeth or if I was in the car and someone else was driving, just whenever I would could, I would study those flashcards and that really helped me. Another thing I did was I got the voice memo app on my iPhone and I recorded myself asking organic chemistry questions and then I would pause long enough for, you know, someone to answer and then I would give the right answer. So it would give me an opportunity to basically quiz myself out loud and I listened to that while I was walking or working out or driving or whatever. So um, do that all safely if you don't feel comfortable doing that while you're working working out or walking or driving, don't do that. Then, you know, don't ever text and drive. Don't be on your phone while you drive. But that's something I did to help me study. So if you study a little bit of time, that's going to help you out long term and you'll be more prepared for your exam. So now is a good time to start that habit as we enter the new semester. And then last but not least, number six, I highly recommend that you make friends in organic chemistry. And I know that is like it's so awkward, okay, and I always hated it, but on the first day of class in my upper level chemistry classes, I would sit in the front of class and talk to people, and out on the first day of class, I'd be like, I kind of think I'm not going to, you know, want to study for this class or whatever. I'm nervous about this class. Would you guys want to form a study group? And I would just ask anyone who wanted who was sitting around me, and just like I would turn around in my seat, just kind of say it to everyone. And I made some great friends that way in college, and it made it a lot easier to study. And then they expected me to be in class, which really helped me because I <laughs> didn't want to skip because my friends expected me to be there. And that level of accountability kept me in class and paying attention more often than any other time that I was a student. And then on the same vein of that, if you do have to miss class, like if you're not feeling well or whatever, you have friends that can help catch you up. And usually if you make friends and you guys study together, there's going to be something you don't understand as well as they understand or vice versa. And you can teach each other what helps the person teaching and it helps the person learning to solidify that knowledge in your mind. Or if you're both confused, you can go together to get help and it's less scary. So I really encourage you to make friends and make study groups and rely on those interactions to get you through organic chemistry better. So those are my top six tips for how to survive organic chemistry. I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions or any ideas, let me know what your questions are. Let me know what your ideas are. I want to help you succeed in organic chemistry this semester. So please feel free to reach out and let me know. Happy studying.